Hi, my name is Frank and I work here at the U's ERC, also known as the Educational Resource Center. Um, today I just kind of wanted to show you guys how I think about functional groups and show you some tips and tricks to memorizing them so that when um, exam day comes, you guys won't be uh, sitting there and thinking like, oh, is it amine or is it amine? Is it ether or ester? Okay, so hopefully you guys can find something um, useful out of this. Okay, so to start them off with, let's talk about um, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Uh, so, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So, um, well, alkanes basically are are just carbons bonded to carbons, but with just a single bond. And then alkenes is just one step more complicated. They're just uh, car they're still carbons bonded to carbons, but now they have a double bond. And then for alkynes, they're just the next step more complicated. They're carbons triple bonded to each other. Okay. And uh, on, on on the exam, if they want me to differentiate between alkane, alkene, alkynes, and like let's say Let's say they had like a matching, and they gave me these three, and uh, these three on the side. Uh, a trick that I thought of to remember them was looking at the A in alkane, the E in alkenes, and the Y in alkynes. So I just think of it as A comes first in the alphabet, so that must be the single bond. E comes next on the alphabet, so double bond. And y comes last on the alphabet, so it must be the triple bond. Okay, next is alcohol. So, alcohols. Now, alcohol might be one of the easier groups for you guys to remember because it's just um, a carbon chain with your OH. And you guys have probably seen this in high school. But if not, just remember it as yeah, a carbon chain and then you have your oxygen bonded to a hydrogen. Now, the aldehyde functional group is basically just a carbon with uh, an oxygen up here that's double bonded to. And uh, just for future references, um, this is called a carbonyl, and this will come into your um, lessons in Orgo 2. So it's a good thing to remember. It's called a uh, carbonyl. And then, uh, so aldehyde has a carbon bonded to an oxygen. And then a carbon chain to the left, and then you have a hydrogen right here, and that's it. So alcohol is just OH, aldehyde is just a carbon double bonded to O with hydrogen and a carbon chain. And now we're going to go more complicated. So the next one that I think of is a carboxylic acid. carboxylic acids, I kind of think of it as a fusion between an alcohol and an aldehyde. So if I need to draw on, on the spot the structure, I just draw the alcohol functional group right here. And then I bring in the aldehyde component, which is the carbon double bonded to O and the carbon chain. So carbon Do you see how I brought in the alcohol component and the alcohol component? And that's your carboxylic acid. Okay. Now, to go more complicated, the next two that a lot of people um, get confused is amines and amides. So I'm going to show you the amine first. So the amine functional group is essentially just a nitrogen with a hydrogen, another hydrogen, and a carbon chain here. Now, um, 
that means they can actually have carbon chains here and here as well. But uh, this is just going to be uh, one of the examples that I show you. So that's an amine. And a way you could think about it is amine, sort of like amino acids. They're the most simplest um, subunits of a protein. So that means, nice and simple, just the nitrogen uh, bonded to a carbon and hydrogens. Next is the amide, or amide. So once again, um, I kind of, I kind of go back to my aldehyde. So just like before, I'm going to draw the amine component down here. Nitrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen, and then uh, let's see. And then once again, I bring back this component of the other one. So here's my carbon, and then double bonded O, and then here's my carbon chain. Okay, so that's alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, alcohols. Aldehydes, carboxylic acid, amine, amide. So amines, they're simpler than amides. Um, okay, next. Ethers and esters. Now, I got these confused in my, my first tutorial. And then I realized it's not that bad. There's just little tricks they can use to differentiate the two. So for ether, uh, when you think of Either, I mean ether, they kind of think of the word either or either. And the structure is basically an oxygen with carbons on either side. And then both of these carbons are just the carbon chain. They can change depending on different ethers, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, yeah, so on to the uh, ether. So yeah, sorry, I, I know that might sound like really similar, but. This is an ether, and then this is going to be a ester. Now the ester is um, just a little bit more complicated than ether. I do what I did before, and I bring in the ether. And then I bring in the uh, aldehyde component again, uh, excluding the H. But um, oh, one small difference is this time, instead of bringing in the carbon, I use the carbon from the ether. There you go. So that's your ester. Okay. It's more complicated than the ether, the ether and you can use the trick um, ether like either on either side of the carbon. Okay. So that's Another one that, uh, oh, so we went over two functional groups with nitrogen before. Now I'm going to go over quickly a third one with nitrogen. And that's going to be my trials. So my trials are just a carbon. And you can look in the name of the functional group as tri. So I, when I see that, I, I immediately think of triple bond. So carbon, which will bond to the end. And then sometimes it's just uh, written as this, and they simplify it. But the moment you see a CN, just know to yourself it, immediately, it's going to be a carbon, which will bond to the end. Okay. Um, let's see. What else am I missing? And then. Basically, the same thing as alcohols, but you have a sulfur instead of the oxygen atom. And they both end the same way, so maybe that'll help you um, think of the structure. Thiol, and then there is uh, thiol ethers. Thiol ether. And sometimes uh, your professor might call them just. 
So thiol ethers are, once again, when you see ether, think of either. So you come back to this uh, structure. But now, because there's a thiol here, like before, you switch the O with an S. And then you keep your carbon chain. And that's a thiol ether. Okay? So, um, let's see. What else did I want to go over? Uh, oh, the last thing. The last thing are, uh, the last thing is airing. Arenes, um, when I see the word arene, I just think of a ring. And that's basically what they are. They're just rings, but they have double bonds in them. So like this benzene. Uh, and a trick you can use to remember arenes is that they have double bonds, so they have the ene part in their name, like alkene. So you kind of think you could kind of think of it like a ring of alkenes. So it's basically an alkene here, alkene here, alkene here. Okay. I uh, hope that helps you. Um, if you guys have anything else that you that you'd like me to try to explain, um, feel free to post a comment or something. Uh, if you have any criticism, suggestions, feel free to tell me. Uh, yeah. All right. Good luck. Okay, if you like what you just saw and uh, found this helpful and you want more, feel free to um, check out the ERC's website. Uh, or you could just come by the ERC. We're on the 5th and 6th floor of 100 Bay State Road. Uh, there are a bunch of other orgo tutors like me who can help you out with um, any other questions you have, that you have. Um, there are, we also have other tutors for Gen Chem, which I know is a really, really frustrating uh, topic. I also tutor that too. It's a lot of fun um, tutoring it again and helping you guys out. So yeah, check us out. Good luck.